Lightroom Classic is great when it comes to organizing and editing your images in an efficient and consistent environment. But what about when it comes to getting your images out of Lightroom, perhaps for posting to your website or posting to social media, or maybe for having someone else print one of your images? Well, this is where the export dialog is really powerful. Now in Lightroom, there is no save as feature, right? Any adjustment you make to your images is dynamically saved into the Lightroom catalog. And this follows the non-destructive approach to image editing. Your images are never modified. The adjustments are saved in the catalog. But when you export your images, you need to render the image and bake all those settings into the image so that you can then share it outside of Lightroom. And this is where the export dialog is really useful. It allows you to do this in a very efficient way. You can also save presets or different recipes, if you will, of how you're going to export your images, a format, maybe even folders that you can put these uh, images into. So to show you how it works, let's jump into Lightroom. So to export an image, you simply select it. Of course, you can select a group of images by holding down the shift key. And now we have all these selected. You can hold down the command or control key on the PC to deselect some images. You can also use that same key, command or control, to select images that are not next to each other. But I'm going to select these two. And then I'm going to go up to the File menu. And this is where you'll find the Export Options here. Now this fourth one, Export as Catalog, is a slightly different kind of an export. I won't be covering that here. I'll make another video about that. But these first three, export, export with previous, and export with preset, are where you can access the export uh, features. So this first one, export, will open up the export dialog. And here's where you'll find all of the options, as well as a way to create presets. The presets are listed here on the left. There is an area for uh, Lightroom built-in presets, plus one for your own user-created presets. Now on the right is where you can adjust your recipe as it were. So at the very top here, you'll see export location. You can specify a specific folder. You can say uh, same folder as original photo, or you can say choose folder later, which means that every time you export images, it'll ask you where you want to place or save the images. You also have some defaults here, desktop, documents folder, etc. I'm going to select specific folder. And then below this, you can now choose a specific folder. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder folder called Exports, and hit Create, and then hit Choose. And now all of my images will be saved to this Exports folder. You can either, even though specify a subfolder. So for example, if this preset that I'm going to make is for my newsletter, I can type Newsletter here, and it'll put them inside a folder called Newsletter inside my exports folder. And you can do this for any of these presets. Below this, we have add to this catalog, which means add the exported images back into this catalog. Don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, there it is. I'll leave that unchecked. And then existing files, this will allow you to decide what happens when you're exporting images and the images already exist. Perhaps you exported them beforehand and you're exporting them again. So you have uh, choose a new name for the exported file, overwrite without warning, skip. But I like the ask what to do. This way it can decide on a case-by-case -case basis. Below this, we have the file naming. And if I check this, you can then use one of these presets to rename the files on export. You can also edit that to create a preset for renaming files. But I rename my images when I import them into Lightroom. I give them a a consistent naming convention with the date and then the location and a unique number. And I like to keep that same naming convention for the exported file. Uh, this is because perhaps I am exporting my images with a client. And if they refer to one of those images, I can easily correlate that to the image in Lightroom because they have the same name. Below this, we have video. I'll leave that closed because it's not relevant here. Then we have file settings. And this is where we can decide the format for our exported images. Of course, we have JPEG, JPEG Excel, which is actually an improved version of JPEG that uh, is, has better compression and better quality. Unfortunately, it's not supported yet by a lot of applications, so hopefully in the future. Then we've got PSD, TIFF, PNG, the usual formats. I'm going to select JPEG. 
By the way, depending on what format you choose, you may also get some other options here. So for example, if I chose TIFF, then you can see I can select the bit depth. JPEG can only uh, support eight bits, and so that's why it's grayed out. I can then set the quality. For my newsletter, for example, I will leave this at 60 because that's good enough for, for that purpose. But if I'm exporting for social media, perhaps, or for my website, then I will raise this up to 90 to get the most quality that I can out of that file. Now, color space, very important because you want to export your images into a color space that will be compatible with where you're going to be sharing your images. If they're going to be online anywhere, then sRGB is the kind of universal color space for anything online, so you want to select that. If you were exporting for printing, for example, you could select uh, Adobe 98, which is a slightly larger color space that would be useful for having it printed. But once again, for anything online, uh, even TVs, things like that, sRGB is a very safe bet and will uh, ensure that your colors remain consistent. Below this, we have a, a new feature that Adobe has added to Lightroom, which is content credentials. And it's a way to give you a little bit more protection for your images online. Uh, there's even a, an Adobe Cloud that you can publish your credentials to that connects it with the image. Uh, you can do that here, publish the content credentials cloud. You can also attach it to the file itself or do both the uh, attach it and publish it. But in any case, uh, click on learn more because you'll have to take a few steps in order to be able to use this feature. I'm going to leave this on don't include for now. Now below this, we get to the image sizing section which can be a little bit confusing. If we leave this resize to fit unchecked, what that means is that your image will be exported at its native size in Lightroom. So whatever the size is of your RAW file, that's the, gonna be the pixel size of the image when you export it. However, more than likely, unless you're printing, you're going to want to resize the image. So I'm gonna click on resize to enable that. And then we've get a, we get a bunch of different options here. Width and height, we get dimensions, which is virtually identical to width and height. We get long edge, short edge, megapixels, and percentage. Now, width and height means that you can set the maximum width and the maximum height for the exported image, but Lightroom will never crop the image. It'll never change the aspect ratio. So this essentially sets kind of a bounding box, and then the image will be fit inside that uh, without, again, changing the aspect ratio. You can set the unit of measure here, so pixels for anything online, any digital display. You can also change this to inches and centimeters if you're going to be uh, printing. But I'm going to leave this at pixels. And if you select pixels, then the resolution setting here is really irrelevant because this resolution setting is only applicable when you are using inches, when you're going to be printing your images, because then you need to decide how to resolve your pixels two inches. That's why it says pixels per inch or pixels per centimeter if you're using that uh, that uh, measuring unit. But because we're exporting in pixels, the only thing that really matters is the pixel size and our destination is also going to have a specific pixel size and they're just going to match up that way. Output sharpening. Uh, here you can check this to get a little bit of output sharpening applied to the exported image. You can select screen. Uh, for, again, a digital display, or matte paper or glossy paper if you're printing. And in either of these three cases, you have uh, you can choose between low, standard, and high for the sharpening amount. And my experience, I have found that the low is almost not noticeable, so I like to use the standard, which seems just about right to me. Below this, you can decide to include some metadata. For instance, you can select copyright only. That'll grab the copyright information that you uh, added to your image and add it to the image here. Uh, that's something that you have to do manually with the metadata in Lightroom. You can also include extra metadata that is included with your raw files, all metadata, for example, to include all the uh, EXIF information. But I like to use copyright only. Below this, you have watermarking, so you can actually add a watermark to your image. If I check this, then you can select from various watermark presets. I only have the default one here. If I click on Edit Watermarks, then here you can actually go in and decide what you want your watermark to say. 
You can change the size of the watermark. You can change the font and the styling. Uh, you can change the shadow if you want one. You can change the opacity. You can also change where it's going to be located on the image. So for instance, you can anchor it to the top right or the bottom right or the bottom center or even in the center. And at the very top, once again, you can also make it a graphic. So you can choose a graphic and perhaps you've got a graphic for your brand or your company or your logo. You can insert that as the watermark instead of just some basic text. Uh, of course, you want to save that watermark. So you come over here and you save it as a preset and you can have various watermarks that you apply to different export presets. I'm going to select cancel here. And then at the very bottom, you have one more option for uh, what happens after you export your images. That's called post-processing, but it really just uh, allows you to choose whether it, whether it will show you the images in Finder. Maybe you want to open it up in Photoshop afterwards to do some additional edits, maybe put a border, something like that, or open in another application. Typically, I leave it on do nothing because uh, when I'm working in Lightroom, uh, I just want to export them and I continue to work in Lightroom until I'm ready to then deal with the images that I've exported. But for the purposes of the demo here, I'm going to leave this on show and finder so we can see the exported images. Now, if I click on export here, it will export those two images that I selected with all of these settings. If I then select two other images and click on export, this dialog will, will open and it'll remember all of these settings that we have here. But if I then go in and change one of these settings, then we would have lost these settings that I have now, which is okay if you're doing just a one-off. But if you want to save this as a preset, then you want to come over to the bottom left here, click on add, and now you can save these settings as a preset. I'm going to type in newsletter two, because I already have a newsletter one. I'll click on create, and then I'll click on export. And you'll see up here, it's exporting the images. And then it opens up the Finder window because we asked it to show us the images. And here are our two exported images. If I double click this first image here, press Command I, you'll see the size of the image. And it's 1620 by 1080. And that's because we told Lightroom to export it in a bounding box of 1920 by 1080. And the, the short side was bounded at 1080, the height but the width only came out to 1620, even though we specified 1920, because it uh, won't change the aspect ratio, and the aspect ratio of this image is going to uh, result in an image that is 1620 by 1080. Now, if I open up the other image, you'll see that a similar thing happened here. Because our height is was set at 1080 as our bounding box, then that's what the height is, uh, been set to, but the width is at 853 because that's the width that it's going to be at its native aspect ratio. Now I'm going to come back into Lightroom and we'll go back to export again. And this time to show you a difference with the image sizing or resize to fit, I'm going to change this from width and height to long edge. And now I'm going to set the long edge to, uh, let's say, 1800. This means that I want the image to be resized and I want the long edge to be 1800 and the other edge is going to be, the other dimension is going to be whatever it is depending on the aspect ratio of the image. So I'll click on export once again. And now you'll see that it's asking me what to do because those two images already exist. So I can overwrite them, which will delete those two images and of course uh, give me the two new images. I can skip, which will do nothing. It won't export the images and leave these two existing images intact. Or I can say, use unique names. Let's click on use unique names. And now you see that here's our original. And then our uh, second image that we just exported has an extra number added to the end because that's the second version of this exported image. If I click on this new exported image now, you'll see that the size is 1800 by 1200. That's because we said to resize the image to the long edge and the long edge is the width. So that's set to 1800. And then the height is the height that it's going to be based on its original aspect ratio, which in this case is 1200. If I open up the other image, once again, you'll see that the long edge is set to 1800. 
the shortage, the width, is now 1422. Again, that's just because that's what it winds up being at this image, uh, image's original aspect ratio. Now, let's say I want to export some other images with that preset. Well, I'm going to select two other images. I'll come up to the File menu once again, and this time, instead of selecting Export, I can select Export with Previous. That'll simply export the image with the previous settings, but let's say I don't remember what the previous settings are, or I'm using it on a different day, I can come to Export with Preset. And here you'll see all of the presets, and I can just select the newsletter number two, and that'll export it with those settings into that same folder once again. And here are our uh, exported images. Now, one other thing you can do with the export dialog is export your images using two or more presets at the same time. So if I select this image and I come up to the export dialog here once again, I can actually check two or more presets. And this means that I will export that image or whatever images I've selected using multiple presets at the same time. This is incredibly useful. Perhaps you want to export an image to use in various uh, destinations, social media and your website. You can select the appropriate presets, export it all at the same time. And this makes it very easy and very consistent once you have these presets set up. Now you notice that there's one other preset up here called export to DNG. And this preset is also very useful. What this preset does is that it'll allow you to export your image as a DNG. And the advantage of the DNG file is that it will also embed the adjustments that you've made to your image. So for example, when I ask my students to send me their raw files for a critique or for, for uh, feedback, I will ask them to use this export to DNG feature so that I then get their DNG file. I can open their image in Lightroom on my computer and I can actually see their adjustments. This is a great way to share your files with someone else in case you want them to also have access to the adjustments. Now, I wouldn't normally go into the export dialog for that. You simply select the image, go up to the file menu and then select export to DNG. And then it will ask you where you want to export your image. So that's a quick tour of the export dialog, but it's very powerful. I hope that gives you some ideas for setting up your own presets to make exporting out of Lightroom efficient and really easy.